So welcome to the 6.5D um, lecture. So this will continue our look in transformation of trigonometric functions. It's mislabeled. You can see right here is 6.7D. It's not 6.7. It's 6.5. And so that's a, a small typo there. And I didn't want that to confuse you. Everything we're doing is taking a look at the graphs. And so we have seen that it's possible to vertically stretch the graph right by uh, changing some values out in front of it so if I put and let me highlight that again if I put this a out in front um, if I put an a out in front then that's going to adjust the amplitude if a is greater than 1 then the vertical stretch is made um, and you get this you get a higher relative um, maximum minimum if it's between 0 and 1 then we're going to shorten it right and that's what we saw when we plugged in 2 and 1 half and so now we're going to worry about making the period longer well if we're going to adjust the period where the number gets adjusted is right here in the middle so I don't know if you can see where I am I'll start drawing some blue lines if you put a 2 on the inside not the outside you're not going to adjust the height at all you're still going to be going to a um, a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. We're still going to have a range from minus 1 to 1. That is not going to change because the last thing to happen is sine. That's why they cared so much to teach you about composite functions before. And so um, what that's going to do is actually shorten our period. The higher that number, the shorter that period is. And that's because we get way out to the 2 pi so quickly, right? We just have to plug in pi. So we shouldn't be super surprised at that. So if you have a number, if your a is greater than 1, then you are going to have a shorter period, right? And in this case, the period's pi. The period's exactly in half of what it used to be. If you have a number that where a is bound between 0 and 1 on the inside so notice this one if we look at sine of x over 2 notice that that's x over 2 is 1 half x or a is 1 half notice that makes the period longer and longer by double so remember the original period of sine was 2 pi and how you get the new period is you divide it always by the a that's in there so look at what 2 pi over 2 is it is pi and look at here the original period for sine is 2 pi the a is 1 half 2 pi divided by 1 half is actually 4 pi right because you'd flip and multiply notice that's the same as the 4 pi here so you can get your period by taking your original period which for sine x is 2 pi and dividing by the a the number that's in there with it we'll see if he says that Oh, he's going to call it B. So let me keep that. Um, let me keep that in in line there. So he's going to call it B. Alternates on what books will do, but B is very common. They hold A for the outside. So let me relabel these as B's. Okay. So if B is greater than one, then you're going to get your new thing by two pi divided by B. And so that's probably what's going to be explained here. So if b is greater than 1, um, you have a shorter period, right? If b is between 0 and 1, you have a longer period, right? And so everything just gets adjusted as, as it was before. So let's take a look at some examples. The graph below, let's look at example 1. Let me be a little bit more specific. The graph below in black is the graph of one period of the regular sine x function with roots at 0, pi, and 2 pi. The graph in red is the graph of y equals sine 2x with roots at 0, pi over 2, and pi. My suggestion is just draw it and then you kind of know where those roots are. So you're going to draw the regular sine graph just in half the, the um, period. If we look at example 2, um, there's a, a small mistake here. This is not a function right here. It needs a variable, so this should have been an x, just like it was over here, 2x. This is x over 2. And so that's going to get elongated with, zero, with zeros at roots, and he's came 0, 2 pi, and 4 pi, right? So it's going to be a little bit longer, and that's because of that half in there. 
So how to find the new period for a trig function bx? Well, what you do is exactly what I was explaining before, is um, one, find the period of the trig function by setting the period of the function equal to the period equal to the absolute value of b times x and solve for x. A little bit different way to do it, but it still works. So you're going to set the inside piece equal to the period, and then you're going to divide by 2. Or you're going to set the inside piece equal to the period, and in this case you'll multiply by 2 to get that 4 pi. That's a pretty decent way to go about it. So let's remember about secant. Before we go look at secant, you can see it here at the bottom of my screen. Do you remember what secant's period is? What we need to do is set 2x over 3 equal to that period. I believe that period is 2 pi. Let's go check. Let's go check what it is. It is 2 pi. So now we're going to multiply by 3 and get 2x is equal to 6 pi. Divide by 2 and get a 3 pi um, period out of that. And then to find the period of tangent of x over 4, we're going to take x over 4 equal to the period. Remember, the period for tangent is just pi. And so its period is going to be 4 pi. You'd want to make note of that period adjustment before graphing and because it really does help you to label correctly. So it doesn't do any, a number inside doesn't do any shifting. It doesn't do any, uh, well, it doesn't change your maximum and minimum, but it does stretch you out horizontally as we knew that we should, or pinches you in vertically. So, so the graph of a trig function b of x where b is greater than 0 has the same shape of the parent graph, but the values of the roots and asymptotes are moved together or farther apart depending on the values of b. Values of that are have an absolute value greater than 1 move the roots and asymptotes farther and the values where it's between 0 and 1 move the asymptotes closer together. Is that true? Let's check that out. I think that might actually be backwards but we'll see. Um, so he has some great ideas about graphing. Let's go put them to practice. right? Let's go see what we can do. Um, let's look at example 1. Now example 1 is something that we've done before. So I'm going to skip example one because that was in the previous two examples. Let's look at something brand new. Example two. When you see that you have a number inside that parenthesis that's being multiplied or divided, that is the moment that you know that there's a period adjustment. So what we do know is that the period is no longer 2 pi. It's whatever we comes out when we set that x over 3 equal to 2 pi. So the new period is 6 pi. So my advice would be just draw the regular sine graph knowing that it's going out to 6 pi. So I'm just going to draw it really big but this is still a height of 1 and a low of negative 1 because nothing is out here to adjust our height. This is where we would have amplitude adjustment. It's that b that's the inside that's causing period. Well, you know this is 6 pi, and you don't have to question what these are. You know that halfway in between, because it's, it's the sine graph, this is 3 pi, and this is 0. Um, and so those are our zeros in there. What's this right here? It's halfway between 0 and 3, or 3 pi over 2, right? Halfway between 3 and 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 divided by 2 is 9 pi over 2. So you can still get labelings of really key aspects. That's my suggestion for how to do this. Let's see what he does. So he's going to go through and do exactly what we did. Set the x over 3 oh, e equal to the roots, right? So he's not identifying the new period, but he gets the same roots of 0, 3 pi, and 6 pi. So he's getting those new roots. And then he's using them to graph to get the exact same graph that we got right up here, right? The, and he's only labeling the zeros, so that's great. You don't have to identify those other points. Let's go take a look at something that's a little bit different. Oh, I like number four. So we, oops, sorry about that. Let me see if I can get back to number four. Okay. Here's number four. Sorry about that. So 
Here's my advice. Let's go get our new period. Our new period is taking, we'll use his method of taking what's inside the parentheses and setting it equal to the original period. And so as we do that, we get x is equal to, um, well, let's see here. Um, we would get 8 pi squared, which is a, a little bit different. So I don't know if this works so well to do it that way. Let me go back to the old way. A great way to get the period, and we'll see what he does. He's probably doing everything through roots. But the original period was 2 pi. And now we're dividing by, oh yeah, 1 over 4 pi. It's the same. So if I flip that up, that's 8 pi squared. It's interesting to see what that is. And so, um, so if we take a look at this, look at what he did. He, he has a typo, because this is a very weird thing for us to have to deal with, 8 pi squared. I want you to take a look at the difference between this and this. So, so far it's the same. Right as I come on to here, it's the same, but he makes a massive change right here. I believe this is the way he wanted this original one to be because it's very strange to have the pi on the bottom in a situation like this because it causes us to get pi squared. And so that's what caused me to doubt what I was doing before, but we're still getting eight pi squared. Notice that he's changed it. Let's go back and change this to um, pi x over four. If we made that change, if we took that and we now rolled with his way of doing these things, um, we go find it again. Okay, here it is. Let's go in here and make a change. And the change that we're going to make is we're going to... I'll go back to his way of doing it in case you, since it's reinforced in the notes. We're going to take pi x over 4 and set it equal to 2 pi. So as we do that, we get pi x is equal to 8 pi, and then we'll divide by pi's to get a new period of 4 pi. So, oh, I apologize, not 4 pi, but 4 because those pi's cancel out. So here's what we do. We don't stress. We totally just come in and say, you know what? The original sine function starts at 0, but now it's going not from 0 to 2 pi, but from 0 to 4. And so this is the number 2. There's all your zeros. You know what this is at reaching a height at 1. And its low value of negative 1 happens at 5. Let's go watch that happen. So notice as he makes those changes, his zeros are at 0, 4, and 8. This is what he wanted, sine of pi x over 4. There's just that typo up there. So I'm glad we worked on this one. And um, 0, 4, 8, you're right. My, I'm so sorry. If I go back, I made a, a mistake. 8 pi over pi is not 4, it's 8. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking. So let me make my adjustments. So this should be 8, this should be 4. So those are the times it's reaching 0, and that's what we're having here, a 0, 4, and an 8. So easy to make mistakes, right? In this, so you want to just be careful as you go through. Notice that he's looking at the period being 8. I think that's wise to figure out first, not last. So he's doing a zero adjustment in there. Let's take a look at this next example. I'm going to make it really big so that we're not seeing what he has. Cosine of 3x over 2. Well, you know a couple of things. You know what cosine looks like, and you know what its period is. Let's start with its period. So we're going to take the 3x over 2 and set it equal to its period, 2 pi. We're going to get 3x then is equal to 4 pi, and x is equal to 4 pi divided by 3. That's going to be our new number. Now, we're not shocked about that because 3 halves is a number greater than 1, so we should be having a period less than 2. So what do I do? 
I remind myself how cosine starts, right? Cosine, uh, let's talk talking about the roots. So cosine of minus pi over 2, right? It, right, that's where the, a root is, minus pi over 2. So if we follow his method, we're going to set the 3x over 2 equal to the negative pi over 2. And pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, because we know that's where they're at. And what are we going to get out of that? When we set it equal to um, negative pi over 2, what do we get out of that? We get negative pi over 3, pi over 3, and pi. And so that's probably a very good way to find these guys. Is, and we'll start looking at that is to get those roots. So we were a little bit stuck with what the initial adjustment was. And so what was happening is we're taking the 3x over 2 and setting it equal to the minus pi over 2. That's letting us get 3x is equal to negative pi and x is equal to negative pi over 3. That's where our period's going to start. And so at negative pi over 3, we're going to start, and we're going to just go up, down, and up. Well, we know what these guys are. These are pi over 3 and pi, right? Because we just set the original zeros equal to that. So that's a great way to go about that as well. So um, we've got lots of examples here. Let's take a look at something like the secant of 3x. So we remember that the secant of 3x is related to um, cosine. So the first thing I want to remember is that I'm dealing with cosine. So I'm dealing with a minus pi over 2, a pi over 2, and a 3 pi over 2 asymptotes, right? Because where are we? We're right off of these peaks and valleys here. And so that's what we're going to adjust. So let's follow his method to a t. We're going to set uh, 3x equal to each one of those zeros. So 3x is going to set, be set equal to negative pi over 2. And so we get x is equal to negative pi over 6. If we set it equal to pi over 2, we're going to get positive pi over 6. And 3 pi over 2, we're going to get 3 pi over 6, which we know better is pi over 2. And so as we go, those are our new asymptotes, right? those are going to be our new asymptotes and so as we go and graph this guy look what happens we're going to go from minus pi over 6 to pi over 6 and from pi over 6 to 3 pi over 6 and we're going to get this nice curve in there and so the question could be well what's our um, period you could figure out your period by taking the high 3 pi over 6 minus the low negative pi over 6 if you're figuring out these roots first that's a 4 pi over 6 or 4 pi over 6, sorry, or 2 pi over 3. That should be your new period. Let's see if he names that as the period. Yep, 2 pi over 3. You could get it that way as well. So you certainly could get it by taking the original period divided by the number that's there, right? Um, which is, I'm oh, sorry, the number in the middle was 3. Apologize. The number in the middle was 3. So that's where you get fast to get the 2 pi over 3. You could set the 3x equal to the 2 pi and very fast get the 2 pi over 3 period. Um, it does help for you to, to know that. Um, but the, setting these zeros equal to, or that middle piece equal to the zeros or the asymptotes is pretty helpful as well. Um, so you have some other examples there. Let's look at one. Let's look at this one over here, a cotangent, example number 10. So what do we remember about cotangent? Let me try to draw cotangent. Cotangent um, is having asymptotes at 0. Maybe I should put those in red. has an asymptote at 0 and at pi, right? If we just look at one period of it, which is all we need to look at. Right here in the middle at pi over 2 is our zero and we're looking like that repeating over and over so our asymptotes are at zero and pi and so what do we need to do we need to set the 5x over 2 equal to zero and the 5x over 2 equal to 5 so if I set 5x over 2 equal to zero well very quickly 
I get x is equal to 0. If I set 5x over 2 equal to pi, then if I multiply by the reciprocal, I get x is equal to, get rid of that really quick, equaling 2 pi over 5. Right? An angle we don't even know. And so what do we have? We have two new asymptotes at 0 and at 2 pi over 5. Well, what's halfway in between 0 and 2 pi over 5? Well, pi over 5 is halfway in between. If you add them up and divide it by 2, it would be the fastest way. And so we know that that's what one period looks like. And he's only asking for one period as you do it in the homework. Um, and so he continues on in this example to say that the period's 2 pi over 5. Pretty easy to see. So hopefully this is all making sense. We'll look at one last example here, number 12, and um, see if that helps you walk you through this one. So cosecant of x over 3. Cosecant's related to sine, so it looks like this. And so if you remember, it has its asymptotes. I'll do those asymptotes in blue. It has its asymptotes here at 0, at pi, and at 2 pi. And that we got a U-shape going up there and a U-shape going down here. That's the graph and having asymptotes at 0, pi, and 2 pi. So if I go in here and try to methodically erase, that's what the graph looks like, getting rid of that helper function, the sine function. So notice he's going to take the 0, pi, and 2 pi and set them equal to x over 3, pretty much tripling them all. Tripling 0 gives us 0. Tripling pi gives us 3 pi. Tripling 2 pi gives us 6 pi. So those are our new asymptotes. So all we have to do is come right down here and start drawing those in at 0, 3 pi, and 6 pi. So here's the 0. Let me go to a highlighter. Um, 0, 3 pi, and 6 pi are new asymptotes. Well, it's pretty easy to figure out what's right in between them. Between 0 and 3 pi is 3 pi over 2. Between 3 pi and 6 pi, if you weren't thinking about, if, well, if you're thinking about, well, how do I do that? Just find the average of the two. Take 3 pi, add 6 pi, and divide it by 2 because you want to go right in the middle. That's where they're coming up with the 9 pi over 2 very easily. It's going to have the exact same shape that we drew up here, only all these have changed to be triple what they were. And it could just be drawn just like that. That would be my advice. Draw the basic one and then do the adjustments. Um, especially if zero is involved, there's going to be no initial adjustment of that line. When zero is not involved as one of the zeros or the asymptotes, then Joe, or I'm sorry, Professor I tell a suggestion to um, set those zeros or those asymptotes equal to the inside piece is very, very wise because it shows you exactly where to start. So there's a description of how to do period adjustments as well, and you'll see that reflected in the 6-5 homework.